About the same time, Fred Russell was becoming a hit and a huge star in England with Coster Joe. In America, Harry Lester, known as the Great Lester, was becoming a hit with his character, Frank Byron Jr. And both these things happened essentially simultaneously. Uh, Harry Lester was in the U.S. making a name for himself with a single character, while Fred Russell was making a name for himself in Britain with a single character. And again, Harry Lester did the same thing. He imbued Frank Byron Jr., who was named after a popular comedian of that day, with human characteristics, human personality traits. Harry Lester was probably the first true ventriloquial superstar. And not just because he was a ventriloquist, but he was a great entertainer. Uh, in the early 1900s, he headlined every vaudeville stage, not only in America, but many in Europe. And he was earning an astronomical sum uh, at that time, and it's a pretty good amount today, $3,000 a week. Now, that's 1905, 1906, 1907. In today's money, that's considerable. But Lester had a direct influence on many, many ventriloquists via his teaching. Uh, in his later years, after he had retired from active show business, he opened the Lester Vocal Studios in Hollywood. And he taught many, many ventriloquists and taught them using the Lester method. And it was a method of personal instruction. Uh, at the time, it was very expensive. Uh, in the mid-50s, the complete course ran about $300, which was a lot of money then, uh, certainly to learn ventriloquism. And it involved many sessions uh, with Lester teaching proper breath control, proper diction, uh, proper manipulation of the figure, all facets of ventriloquism. And uh, he taught some of the best and the brightest who came out and uh, later were celebrities into the 60s and 70s.